Can we uh, linger on the spike protein for a little bit? Uh, is is there something interesting or like beautiful you find about it? I mean, first of all, it's an incredibly challenging protein. And so we, as a part of uh, our sort of uh, research to understand the structural basis of this virus, to sort of decode, structurally decode every single protein uh, in its proteome, um, we tr- you know we've been working on the spike uh, protein, and uh, one of the main challenges was that uh, the uh, cryoEM uh, data allows us to uh, reconstruct or to obtain the 3D coordinates of roughly two thirds of the protein. The rest of the one third uh, of this protein, it's a part that. Uh, is buried into the <laughs> into the membrane yeah. of the virus and uh, of the of, of the viral envelope, and uh, it also has a lot of unstable structures around it. So it's chemically interacting somehow with whatever the heck it's, it's connecting. Yeah. To. So so it, people are still trying to understand. So so the the nature of uh, and the the role of this uh, you know uh, of this uh, one third because the the top part uh, you know the the primary function is to get attached to the you know uh, ace2 receptor human receptor there is also beautiful you know uh, mechanics of how this thing happens right so because there are three different uh, copies of this uh, chains uh, you know there are three different domains right so we're talking about domains so so this is the receptor binding domains rbds that gets untangled and get ready to 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 atta- to get attached to to the receptor and now they are not necessarily going in a sync mode as a matter of fact say synchronous so yes so and this is this is where you know yeah. the another level of complexity comes into play because you know right now what we see is we typically see just one of the arms going out yeah. And getting ready to to atta- to be attached to the uh, uh, to the ACE2 receptors. However, there was a recent mutation that uh, uh, people studied in that uh, spike protein, and um, a um, very recently a group from um, UMass Medical School. Uh, we happened to collaborate with groups. So this is a group of uh, Jeremy Luban and uh, a number of uh, other faculty. Um, they uh, actually uh, solved the uh, the mutated structure of the spike, and they showed that actually, because of these mutations, you have more than one arms opening up, <laughs> and so now, so you, so the frequency of two arms going up incre- increase quite you know drastically. Oh, interesting. Does that does that change the dynamics somehow? It, how it's it, it potentially can change the dynamics of because now you have two possible opportunities to get attached to the ACE2 receptor. It's a very complex molecular process, mechanistic process. But the first step of this process is the attachment of this spike protein of the spike trimer to the human ACE2 receptor. So this is a molecule that sits on the surface of the human cell. Yeah. And that's so, essentially what initiates the what triggers the, the whole process of in, you know encapsulation. Uh, 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 if this was dating, this would be the first date. So this is the uh, <laughs> this in a way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so is it is it possible to have the spike protein just like floating about on its own? Or does it need that interactability with the uh, uh, with the membrane? Yeah, so it needs to be attached at least as far as I know, but uh, you know, when you get this thing attached on the surface, right? There is also a lot of dynamics on where, <laughs> it, how it sits on the surface, right? Yeah. So, for example, uh, there was a recent uh, work in uh, again uh, where people use the cryoelectron microscopy to get the first glimpse of the overall structure. It's a very low res, but you still get some interesting details about the surface, about what is happening inside, because we have literally no clue until recent work about how the the capsid is organized. What's how, the capsid? So capsid is essentially, it's the inner core 
of the viral particle where the uh, there is a, the RNA of the virus and it's pr protected by another protein and protein uh, uh, that essentially acts as a shield but you know, uh, now we are learning more and more. So it's actually, it's not just this shield, it's you, it's potentially is used for the stability of the outer shell of the uh, of the virus. So it's it's pretty complicated. And uh, so, I mean, understanding all of this is really useful for trying to figure out like developing a vaccine or some kind of drug to attack any aspects of this, right? So, I mean, there are many different implications to that. I mean, first of all, you know, it's it's important to understand the virus itself, right? So, you know, in order to uh, to understand how it acts, what is the overall mechani mechanistic process of this virus, replication of this virus, proliferation to the cell, right? So, so that's one uh, aspect. The, uh, the other aspect is, you know, designing new treatments, right? So one of the uh, possible treatments is uh, you know designing nanoparticles and so some nanoparticles that will resemble the viral shape that would have the spike integrated and essentially would act uh, as a competitor to the real virus by blocking the ace2 receptors and thus preventing the real virus entering the cell 